What is up guys, all Snurcho here, and today we're opening this new Marvel Legends set of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So this is, I believe, Wave 2, because we've already done a set of Guardians of the Galaxy, or this could just be another one. I'm pretty sure we just did one recently, though. But in this set, it bit has the build figure of Mantis, so if you... I know it's hard to see with the way, but the camera is just not good enough to use in other ways. Um, but it has parts in it, so like I think maybe, yeah, right here you can see like her body. Her head's up here, which I don't think you can see. Yeah, not in there. And then it's, so each set has body parts for Mantis to build her, which usually the build of figures are big characters. So like this guy would be more of like a build of character just because he's so big in size. Um, but for some reason they chose Mantis, which is a little tiny you know girl version kind of like Gamora here so it's like they did with the Jubilee and uh, X-Men set a few years ago but in this set we have since it's Guardians of the Galaxy we do have Star-Lord of course and Gamora then of course her sister Nebula and then over here which I think is cool which again you may not be able to see everything but we'll go through each one so you'll see it then but it is Rocket Raccoon and then there's a little baby like little t toddler Groot or whatever you want to call it from the set and then up here we have Adam Warlock um, Mar it says Death Head, Death's Head 2, which I've never heard of before, but obviously again, some with Guardians of the Galaxy. And then X Nihilo, I believe is what it's called. Um, but they're just, you know, two like villain guys, I assume, by the looks of them. But as I said, you'll see them here um, real quick. But of course, each of these come with weapon, of course, the character, weapons, if they have any. Um, some do, some don't. And then, of course, the body parts for Mana. So go ahead and open them all together. Go through each one and show up body parts. And then, of course, we'll save all the Mantis parts until the end and put it together and go through that. So go ahead and get each of these open, and I'll be right back with them. Okay, so we got our first character up here, and it is Rocky Raccoon. And so, of course, this is real small. It's, like, hard to see. But I can't get the um, thing any closer or whatever, but I can bring it up to you. So here is Rocky Raccoon. So, of course, it just looks like the normal Rocky. So, obviously, if you've seen uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, all these characters look exactly like they did. So he's wearing, like, the same exact outfit as he did in the movie. And um, there's not really much to him. So he is a little tiny character, as you can see. Um, I'll eventually uh, pull a character. I'll just bring Star-Lord up here real quick. So you can see there's the size difference between um, Rocket and Star-Lord. So you can see that they did make it pretty much to like scale or whatever for the characters. Uh, but so here we have Rocket. As I said, he's in his just normal outfit. He's got obviously movable parts and stuff as they all do. His tail moves so it helps you like stand him up since he's got such tiny legs. Um, you can like stand him up and use his tail to like brace him so he doesn't fall back. And so it just looks really cool. And so this Star Lord, or Rocket, I mean, I don't know if I've been calling the wrong thing, but Rocket has like a mouth open. And he also does come with a head that has the mouth closed. So you can have either open or closed, whichever you prefer of Rocket. So if you like, you know, one or the other, you can switch him out. So he comes with that head. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is a Rocket and Groot set. So here's little tiny Groot. So like I said, the baby Groot, toddler Groot. So he's not in the plan anymore, but he's a little kid. And so you see even here next to Rocket how big he is. And so he's in um, the, like, uh, Reavers out, or what, I forget what the group is. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but the um, Yondu's group, the Reavers or Ravengers. I can't remember. I think it's Ravengers. Um, but he's in their little outfit that they put on him, and he just looks super cute there and everything. So that's really cool to go along with it. And for Rocket, you do have two guns. So a gun, um, this kind of like revolver-looking gun, and then a gun that looks kind of like Han Solo's gun, which is kind of cool. Um, so you got both of those guns, and so they're real tiny so that they can obviously fit in Rocket's little tiny hands. Um, so that's really cool that comes with that. And then, of course, this does build Mantis, so it comes with, like, Ma Mantis's torso and stuff, as you can see here. So we have, like, most of her body, so even this part of her is bigger than Rocket and everything. So, of course, we'll set that aside to build her later. Um, but for Rocket, obviously, on the box they have some stuff. It says, a genetically engineered raccoon and a regenerating tree-like humanoid. Rocket and Groot make for a one-of-a-kind duo. Not sure what kind, but definitely one-of-a-kind. So it's kind of a little funny thing there for Rocket and Groot. And so I just think um, this is really cool with the little Rocket and then even smaller Groot. And so that is Rocket and Groot. And next up here we have Gamora now. So again, these look exactly like the movie. So if you can even see, she does kind of look a lot like uh, Zoe Saldala or whatever. I can't 
don't know exactly how you say her name, but looks almost exactly like the girl that plays her and stuff. And so these look very realistic. And so, of course, here's her outfit. Again, it's just like you see in the movie because that's exactly what these are based off of. So she obviously has her red hair, her green skin. Then she's got, like, the blue outfit that they, like, all kind of wear and stuff. And then the brown uh, overcoat jacket there. Um, she does have, like, a belt with, like, a holster thing on, which we'll show in a minute. Then, of course, her high heel boots that she wore are just like she wore in the movie that had, like, the base, the sole. But then there's, like, a hole in the middle, as you can, like, see there and stuff. Um, so as I said, that looks exactly like her, which is kind of creepy how much it, alike it looks like. And then, of course, she does come with her sword. So the sword that you see at, like, the very beginning of the movie, and she uses uh, some parts throughout the movie and stuff. And then it also has the little sword. So, like, the sword she had, like, shrinks down, and it forms into this. And then when she wants to use a sword, it extends out. So it's kind of like a lightsaber. But I believe you can stick this down in here um, somehow... I don't know which direction it needs to go in. Oh, there, like that. Oh, it wasn't her pocket thing or her holster. It doesn't stick very well, obviously, if it was standing up, it would. But it just sits down in there because it's got like a little pocket part down here and then a, um, like a grip up here. So it kind of like holds it a little bit in there. So obviously, you can, if you want to have it um, in her holster, you can put it there. Or if you want it in her hand, you can stick the actual sword in her hand. And then she also does come with the gun like she uses at some points in the movie, like um, at the beginning and stuff when they're fighting the big monster and she pulls out the gun and stuff. And so she has that. And then, of course, it does come with the right leg of Mantis. So we have Mantis's leg here. It looks so tiny and skinny. But, of course, um, her and uh, Nebula come together in, like, a pack thing together. And it uh, says the daughters of Thanos. And so, obviously, she's the daughter of Thanos, which is the big bad guy that they're leading to in these Marvel movies. But that's going to be it for Gamora. And next up here we have Nebula, so Gamora's sister, and so obviously she was um, a bad guy in the first movie, and then the second one she starts off bad, but then turns good, and then tries keeps trying to kill Gamora, until eventually Gamora, like, they settle their differences or whatever, and end up helping each other. So again, Nebula looks exactly like she does in the movie. Her face looks very similar to this um, girl that plays her and stuff, and it just looks exactly the same. She's got her blue skin with all the different face parts and stuff that's been replaced on her because, um, as they said in the movies and stuff, that when they were kids and um, Thanos would make her and Gamora fight, and Gamora would always win. And every time uh, Nebula would lose, Thanos would take a body part from her and replace it, and so that's why she has all the weird stuff on her head and the body parts and everything. But then she's just here in her blue, or purple, if I knew the right color, purple outfit. So it's, it looks really cool with the purple and then her blue skin and everything. And so, yeah, it just looks a lot like Nebula. And then she does come with her robot arm that she gets at one point in the movie. I forget when it is. Um, but uh, she has this arm instead of her, this arm, because, like, this arm gets ripped off. Or she doesn't have it or something. I can't remember exactly how it is, but I know she does have this arm in the movie. And so you can uh, pull the arm out of the socket there and then put this one in place if you want the robot or that robotic arm. And then she does come with a gun too. Um, so there's this little tiny gun that you can obviously put in her hand and stuff. And it doesn't look like she has any holsters or anything. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it. But I, I think this is the gun like she uses to shoot uh, Yondu's fin off the top of his head and stuff. And so there's that gun. And then she does come with the left leg of Mantis, so we do have, you know, both legs now. Of course, the sisters both come with legs. And as I mentioned, she is the other daughter of Thanos. And just on the box, of course, this is for both of them. It says, Though each choose their own path in the wake of their father's rise to power, these skilled assassins forever share a familial blood. And so that just, you know, talks about the connection between her and Gamora. But that is going to be it for Nebula. And next up here we have Star-Lord. So of course this is the Chris Pat Pratt character and the main uh, character, Peter Quill, from the movie. And so again, this looks um, pretty much uh, exactly like the character. I think he looks the least like, um, so he doesn't look as much like Chris Pratt to me as the other characters do. But once I look at it close enough, I do start to see it and stuff. But I think he looks um, pretty good and decent in that form. Um, but the one thing, he has this scarf on. I don't remember him wearing the scarf in the movie at all, but... Um, they have it on this character, but of course he has his um, kind of famous shirt that I know store sold and everything um, for the movie. So he has that on, and then of course his red uh, long overcoat jacket and stuff. And then he does have, uh, 
it came with it, but I didn't know what it was, but then I finally saw it down here. It does have what I assume to be his Walkman. I couldn't tell exactly because it just looks like a black, like, block, and it's hard to tell anything, but it does go on his, um, there's a little, like, peg on his belt that it goes into and has holes in the back. And then he also does come with, um, his gun, so the two guns they have, I don't know if they are called anything in particular, but he does have those. And there are spots, I can't see because of the scarf, um, on his pants that you can, like, stick them, so however they go, I assume, facing downward, and then in the holes on the gun you can stick them and I believe it's like the top hole here goes on to the um, the pegs on his leg and stuff but like I said it's hard to get on with the coat and everything but I'm pretty sure you can take the scarf off if you wanted to but I'm just gonna leave it on since these are not mine these are my brothers and so of course you can put them in his hands and stuff and fire like he did at his father when he found out his dad put the cancer in his mom he's like pew, 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 type thing um, so there we have Star, Star Lord, and he does also come with the right hand of Mantis, and so she's doing like a two finger thing. I think it's supposed to be like when she touches someone, or I don't know exactly what she's doing. I know she obviously touched people to get their um, feelings or whatever and stuff, so maybe that's what she's doing, you know, just like laying two fingers on to get the feelings. But that's her right arm. And then for Star Lord's box, it says. Um, cosmic calamity when star lord blasts into battle it's not a matter of things get weird but a matter of when so that's kind of a, again a funny little thing to add on for star lord there and so uh, that's i think about it for the character so that is star lord and next up here we have adam warlock so this is an interesting character and one that's going to be very interesting to see what they do in the uh, marvel uh, universe or the mcu whatever they call it because if you saw Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and saw the end credits, this is who is in the big pod thing that the, um, I don't remember what her name is. Um, but she's like, she was the gold queen, so like the uh, queen or whatever that was all gold. And she has the little, like, big giant pod thing and says, I shall call him Adam. So this is Adam that comes out. And he's the guy that I believe is the one that does kill Thanos in the comic series, or you know it does whatever to thanos in the whole um infinity gauntlet war thing and stuff and so he plays a big part of that and so this is obviously um who they're leading to in the guardians of the galaxy and who knows if he'll play a part in the actual infinity war movies or not i don't know for sure but um it's really cool and i can't wait to see exactly what they do with him but here's an um i've seen adam warlock obviously in all different costumes over the years and stuff but this, so this one is just all black and red which i think looks really cool i like the kind of like lightning stri um design like stripe looking thing down his legs and of course on this um like cloth that's co covering him and then on his chest and everything and he does have these blue like um energy things i don't know exactly what you call them but a lot of um these marvel legends come with these things um but i just left them on because they're kind of like stuck on his hand and stuff um but it they look kind of cool so it's like showing that he has some sort of power and then of course his f face is like all orange or gold and i like his like little like mustache or whatever the hair on his chin there he has i think it makes him look cool but then it's like he's all emo or something with eyeliner and stuff but i just think he looks cool um, so he's gold or uh, orange or whatever. I like the people from whatever that place. This I want to say the Sovereign, but I don't know if that's their name or not. Um, but I just think it looks really cool. And of course, has a gold belt to hold on this cloth or whatever. Um, but I just think this that character looks really awesome. And then he does also come with a blue head that you can switch out on, which I believe it's called Magnus, I want to say. Um, and so it's kind of like an evil or different version of Adam, um, it's, or like a evil brother or some sort of thing like that. I know it's obviously connected him because they look exactly the same and have the same face and stuff, just different colors, but it's some sort of like evil part to Adam or something. So you can switch that head on. I know my brother bought two of these, one he's doing with the blue head, one with the normal head so he can have the two. Um, but I think it just looks really cool. Like I said, cannot wait enough to see him in the movie. But then he does come with the head of Mantis, so there's obviously Mantis, if you saw the movie, does look just like her. And so we got Mantis's head to go with her body, and so that's going to be it for Adam Warlock. And next up here, we have a character I've never seen or heard of before, but his name is X Nilo, I believe is how you pronounce it. And so he shares a box with Adam Warlock, so I assume they have a connection of some sort, obviously, since they're, um, they share the same type of box, and they're labeled as cosmic protectors um so again I'd, i would think he'd be was bad i you know i thought a lot of these characters were like or 
everything but the actual Guardian stuff were bad, but by the way it looks, they're not all that bad. Uh, but he's obviously all gold, as you can see. He's got really nothing but gold. Then he has this, um, like, character or shape here on his chest that kind of looks like a Greek letter or something, kind of like an Omega or something along those lines. I don't know. Um, but so obviously that has to deal with uh, something related to him. And then he has um, this head with, of course, the two horns. Of course, this one's being uh, a lot bigger than this one, which looks like a lot of characters have, like, the horns on their head. Um, like uh, Steppenwolf, I think it is, or whatever, from the new uh, Injustice or Justice League movie. Um, he has the horns on the side of his head, similar to this and stuff. But he does also have, it's hard to get him in the camera here, but the like green like eye or something there on this forehead. I don't know exactly what that has to do. Um, but of course goes with his actual green eyes and he's got a, of course, a menacing smile and stuff. Like I said, I thought he looked evil, but he's a, 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 a uh, apparently a protector. So I assume that would mean good, but you never know. And the only thing he comes with is the left arm of Mantis, so nothing else besides a part for her, so I'll set that aside. Um, but just to read the box what I said, as I said, he's um, matched up with War um, Adam Warlock. But it says, Masters of energy manipulation, these supreme beings seek to defend the cosmos at all costs. So by that, it sounds like he's a good guy. Not exactly sure. I don't know if he'll ever be in a movie or anything. But that's going to be it for X Nilo. And our last character of the set is Death Heads 2. Um, not exactly sure who this is, but I think he looks really awesome. I like the way he looks and stuff. Um, but I've never heard of it before and don't know really anything about him. But he, as I said, looks super cool. So he has this giant thing on his arm, as you can see. I assume it's supposed to be like a gun you know, that shoots out from like this part. I'm not exactly sure, but it's just a giant like mechanical gun. It's got, as you see, like robot tubes and stuff so it's a big robot thing on a metal arm which usually with this it's like colossus or anybody that has um you know a replacement arm type thing gets this treatment on marvel Legends. so something along those lines and of course look at his head here though too he's got like a weird skull of course it looks um sort of like an animal skull with like horns so kind of like a goat or some sort of mountain goat type thing and you could see some like the skull type stuff so it looks like all the like normal like western stuff you see with like the skulls um, but it's kind of then gets like all ripped apart and disappearing and he's got like an actual like skin stuff with teeth so he's got like an actual jaw and everything and it just looks really creepy so there's like a better look at it there it just looks really weird and cool of course then he has hair which I don't know if these are like dreadlocks or if it's more robotic hair because it looks kind of like this stuff too so I'm not exactly sure what it is then he has another batching or arm that has just like a normal looking hand on it obviously and then of course his blue outfit looks almost like an x-men with the colors with the blue and yellow or gold in this case and then down here on his legs he has the like spike or like the, i don't know what you call them like spike flares coming out off of him and then of course he has a belt that looks like the same almost same materials as his hair and stuff um but for him he doesn't really come with anything but a hand or a finger or whatever or a hand with a pointing looking finger I don't know exactly what to do. It looks like he could hold something, but he doesn't come with anything to hold. So I don't know exactly what that's all about, but you can obviously switch um, the left hand here out for that if you want to. Um, he does not come with any piece of mana, so this is a character if you want to build mana, you don't have to buy. Um, but just what it says here, it says, A cyborg hero with a repertoire of super abilities, Death Heads 2 has increased physical strength and even stronger personality. So by that it says a cyborg hero, so I assume by that it means he's good, even though he looks like he'd be like one of the most evil things there is. But apparently he's a good guy, but like I said, I have no clue anything about him, never seen him before, and doesn't look familiar or anything, but I think he looks super cool, though, that, I know that much. So that's going to be it for Death's Head. And now we have all of the Mantis parts so we can get ready to put Mantis together here. So as you can see, we do have all the parts ready to go. So I'll stick her together real quick and then be right back. Okay, so we got Mantis all together now and she was difficult to put together because the body parts are so hard. So like the arms took forever to get on and stuff. Um, but I finally got it together, I think. So if parts fall off during the video, you know, I didn't get everything in correctly. So here she is in just her green outfit as... Um, she wore in the movie, like I said, looks almost exactly like the girl in the movie. So her head there with her two antennas, so it's kind of like why she's a mantis or whatever. And I think she oh, she has like bug eyes and stuff, because obviously mantis bug and everything. She's got her green hair. I think Norm, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I 
thought I saw that she was like an actual like bug looking creature in like the comics and stuff but I don't know exactly but of course she has like the feeling where she can touch somebody and sense their feelings and stuff so she can you know find out like truths and stuff like that type thing like what people are thinking and all that sort of stuff um, but there's not much more to her she's just a real small girl she doesn't have any weapons or anything um, but like I said she just does all that stuff um, that she, or like her powers and everything like she has in the movie um, but yeah there's not much more to her other than that just her outfit here and like I said, she looks exactly like she does in the movie. Has an outfit very similar to what she wears in the movie. So there's not much more to her than that. So that's going to be it for this opening of the Marvel Legends series of Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2. I believe like Wave 2. I don't know exactly sure. But I know we've opened a wave of, of Gardens of the Galaxy recently. But um, this is obviously that has the bullet figure mantis as you can see here. Um, but if you enjoyed this unboxing, please leave a thumbs up. Leave any comments you have down below. Let me know what your character is, fav is your favorite character from Guardians of the Galaxy, whether it be Star Lord or Groot, or Rocket, any of those, Gamora um, or Drax even is really cool. But whichever one you like, let me know in the comments down below. And then don't forget to hit that red subscribe button to catch up on all our videos. And we'll see you next time.